Now, third, gene expression. Creatine doesn't just fuel muscles. It can flip genetic switches for growth. It has been shown to upregulate genes like IGF-1 and some myogenic or muscle building factors, which can drive muscle protein synthesis. Creatine combined with resistance training has been shown to boost IGF-1 expression, which absolutely leads to bigger, stronger muscles. That's one of the things the bodybuilders want to take advantage of. It also does so probably by activating some of these genes called myoD and myogenin which are key players in muscle repair. Now, of course, this is not just for bodybuilders. It can absolutely be a tool that is leveraged by older adults who want to fight sarcopenia or muscle wasting and even support neural repair in neurodegenerative diseases by enhancing some of these energy-dependent signaling pathways. So why does any of this matter? These effects, like stronger membranes, less, less oxidative damage, and these genetic boosts, if you will, really do make creatine a multi-tool for the cell, a workhorse that's involved in multiple beneficial aspects of the cell. And then for Alzheimer's, a topic that I just can't help but stay close to in this regard, that could stabilize these neurons, reduce the oxidative stress, and really support myriad repairing processes. This is the kind of evidence that is generally overlooked when it comes to creatine. It's not just a performance enhancer, and it's not just focused on ATP. It is a cellular protector with a pretty far-reaching potential. Now, let's keep that in mind as we tackle the myth that scares people away from creatine. This is a myth that just won't die and to this day continues to persist that is the myth that creatine damages your kidneys. If you've mentioned creatine to perhaps a conventional doctor or a friend, you've probably heard this before. And let's clear the air with some science. The concern comes from confusion about creatinine, not creatine, but creatinine with that extra in, creatinine. Creatinine is a waste product form, formed when creatine from muscles or just supplements is used up. As your muscles tap creatine phosphate or any cell to regenerate ATP, some of the creatine will naturally be degraded into creatinine. And creatinine is then a product to just be eliminated. It's used, it's, it's the evidence that creatine has served its purpose. And so the kidneys will then filter and excrete the creatine product, creatinine, into the urine to be dumped from the body. Now, it's no surprise, if you are loading your body with creatine, supplement like through supplementation, you're going to have a lot more creatine in the body, which also means you're going to be getting rid of more creatine. So blood and urine creatinine levels should absolutely be expected to go up. Now, unfortunately, a blood test might flag this as high, sparking some concern of kidney damage. But here's the truth. Elevated creatinine from creatine is a normal sign of metabolism. It's not a sign of harm. Now, creatinine is commonly used as a signal where the physician wants to get an idea of how the kidneys are working. What they would need to know is that if a person is taking creatine as a supplement, boosting their levels to much higher, to a higher level, it's no surprise that the creatinine excretion is going to be naturally higher. It's like seeing more exhaust from a revving car engine. It's just a byproduct. It's not a sign of a broken motor if you see more exhaust coming. You're revving the engine more. Now, decades of research back this up. A 2008 study followed athletes taking up to 20 grams daily for five years, and there were no changes in kidney function, like the most famous being glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. A second review article confirmed creatine safety for healthy kidneys, even with very long-term use. Now, of course, if you have a pre-existing kidney condition, by all means, just check in with your clinician. Remember, I'm just your friendly neighborhood scientist. I'm not your doctor. But for healthy folks, the data is quite clear. Creatine is safe at even surprisingly high doses. Now, what could you do? If you're active, you're building muscle, or you want a sharper brain, you could consider creatine. And my general advice is a few points. First, 
I'd just suggest sticking with the most tested and cheapest, which is creatine monohydrate, standard or micronized. It is proven, it is affordable, it is effective. But of course, stay hydrated. Creatine will pull water into muscles. So make sure that you're really staying hydrated as you are increasing your use of creatine. And then if you're looking for specific gains, be patient and expect the gains to be somewhat subtle. It'll take some time. And then you're going to, especially with things like cognitive improvements, you might not be very cognitive declined and uh, failing cognitively in the first place. So just be reasonable in what you expect the results to be like. Now, for those of you who may be deliberately avoiding meat, vegetarians and vegans, I would suggest that creatine is extraordinarily relevant. Your levels very likely may be a little low depending on what your demands are in your body. And creatine supplementation could be an absolute game changer from you know, biceps or brains, like I mentioned earlier. Now, beyond that, for older adults, I'm also incredibly warm when it comes to creatine use. It could be very helpful, not only for muscle to help reduce muscle loss, but even brain and bone and just overall health of your cells. High doses for sleep deprivation is one of the areas that is very promising. And it's something that I find quite exciting as a person who chronically struggles with poor sleep. And decades of data have just really shown that creatine is a very safe, a very effective supplement. 